I'm here with Leffen, the new Super Smash Brothers Melee Evo champion for 2018. Yeah. You, you had quite the pop off. You were uh, <laughs> clearly very excited. You had a uh, tweet storm after that. How are you feeling right now? Honestly, like, I already tweeted some of it. You know, I got some of it out of me. But, like, it was just a rush of emotions, right? And yeah. right now, this is actually what happened after I won uh, Gamo and CO2. Like, I just feel really empty. Like, all the tension that I've had, mm -hmm. like, in the stomach or whatever, is kind of just gone. And you kind of... It's really rare for me not to be salty right after a tournament. Because every time I lose, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. man, shucks. This is really sucks. But... Now it just feels empty and like that stillness is something that like is so rare for me, but I really, really appreciate it. Your three sets today, you beat some of the best players in the game. Um, they were good. All of them were. You had <laughs> HBox right out the gate, you had Plup next, and you had Armada. It's literally the top three in your game. Walk me through those matches, what you're thinking, what you're telling yourself uh, to kind of boost your confidence, keep it high, and you know, tell yourself that you can win that. So Hungerbox was first, right? And mentally, that was probably the hardest one because, like, I beat him in winter finals of Lotry City just last week, but then he adapted to basically most of the things I did. I couldn't really perform at all in grants, and he basically 6 0 me in the same matchup we had to play today. And it's just a matchup where, like, it's just so, there's so much to it. Like, me and Hungerbox have this rivalry. I really, you know, just like Puff as the character. And throughout this weekend, I've been boot camping with Armada and the other Europeans. And while I'm trying here, like, all right, let's not think about the character in a bad way. And like, they're always just complaining, complaining, complaining about the character. And like, some of it is warranted, but that mindset was really hard for me to like get into. But it worked best for me that after game one, where I just really didn't have it, like I didn't go for it. I just let him dictate the pace and he really popped off and like, just destroy mm -hmm. me. I realized that like, it's just me and another melee character. What if this was a friendly? Would I want to lose the next match? Right. No, like I want to win every match. Like it's nothing more like simple than that really, that I just want to win. And like, all I have to care about is what is he gonna do? And what am I gonna do? And once I did that and I realized like I could lose, but I could also win, like, the rest of the tournament was kind of like just keeping that mindset, keeping the focus on exactly what I can do, nothing else, no other players, what are they feeling? I'm just trying to think, what can I do? What are they gonna do? And so I just came back really strong. Um, latter, latter parts of Pokemon Stadium, which was game two, and then game three. I could feel like that he, like, um, as soon as I got the first stock, he wasn't really sure what to do anymore because some i just beat some of the core options he picked out and after that i really just didn't let the league go you and him hungry box have not only just a rivalry but sometimes it gets personal you guys take shots at each other on twitter yeah it's a lot of digs i said when we were sitting in this meeting room with our photographers that regardless of who wins that there's going to be a pop-off and somebody's going to be very excited <laughs> to walk away from that one it's it's the it's the winner's yeah. semifinals. It's not yeah. in, you know, it's not in the, the real show. <laughs> and um, did that series felt like it really meant a lot that you had to win that one to make it all the way? It did. And I would not have been satisfied if, um, like, with an EVA win if it didn't include beating Hungry Bucks because he was the favorite going in. Mm -hmm. Everyone's this thing, like, same melee. Like, that didn't really matter to me, but everyone wanted me to beat him. And I managed to dodge Mewtwo King because he lost early. But... I really wanted to beat Hungerbox on that stage, and to do it that way just meant a lot to me personally. You had that period a couple of years ago where you couldn't enter the U.S., and we as, as spectators only got to see you a couple of times a year, and playing in Europe, playing in other countries, Canada, yeah. and Gommel. Um And then you've kind of, since you've been back, since you've been able to re-enter the U.S., you've had these tournaments where you, it looks like every tournament you're getting closer, you're getting closer, you're getting closer, and you're getting closer to what this is. How rewarding does this feel now that you have that EVO trophy? <laughs> it feels really rewarding because, so I talked about this in some of my tweets, but Melee from the beginning, right, was, I never intended for like it to be my career or anything. It was just like I was in school, I was depressed. I eventually ended up 
dropping out of high school and melee was the thing where I could just like let any of that go, all society, all my problems with it. I could just play this game and it was like an outlet for all the negative energy I had. And then eventually, you know, like I realized I can't just be like destructive or anything. I was really toxic in the beginning. And my first string of really good improvements was 2015, where I actually like just got a job and got something else in my mind and realized how to balance things and how to like keep things. Like I was still sad, I was still depressed in some ways, but I, I like got an outlet and I was just able to not let it overwhelm like my play basically. But after that, I almost got number one, right? And then I lost my visa <laughs> through like the worst possible way, the worst possible time in someone's career. And right before Big House. Yeah, right before Big House. And in some ways, like, you could see it as like the worst possible thing, right? Like if you look at someone's legacy, oh, a really bad injury or something like that. And obviously since after that, when I came back, my results were worse. But for me, it was, it was rough, but it, it was the same thing again, right? Where I had to struggle. I basically just sat at home and did nothing for an entire year. And it was always like, oh, it's gonna be, you know, you're gonna have your visa now, you're gonna have your visa now. And I kept practicing for the first couple of times, right? But then eventually I just realized like, I'm, I can't do it. I can't just like keep practicing and then not get to like show any of it. And then eventually Gommel happened and that was really just like the showing of all the negative energy I had from losing early to GTX and all the visa troubles. But after that, like, and I finally got my visa, it was, I had like a much better positive outlook, right? But that also meant that I didn't have the same drive to perform because I was like, all right, I, you know, I have a sponsor, I have a stream, people actually, like m my place in the community isn't as controversial and like as consuming. So I didn't really feel the need to perform at every single tournament. And I need to like show that I'm good at something. Um, so since then, it's just been like stepping stones, right? Where like I keep getting a little bit better every time and I just try to like reconfigure my brain basically, rewire it to manage to function even though I'm not miserable rest of my life. So I can actually like play melee with positive energy or like being happy. And that is honestly what means the most to me that I woke up today happy even before I played. I was happy yesterday. And even when I lose, I'm not like, it doesn't hurt me as much, which is obviously depends from time to time, but the fact that I was able to do it and, you know, like do the rest of my life good too means a lot more than if I just like had this one win and everything else sucked. Ironically, like Hungrybox, you have very high highs in your mentality. You have very low lows in your mentality. I think that goes for so many players. Him and I have talked in depth about what he does to keep himself composed. What do you do to keep yourself composed? Um. I feel like I need a core game plan. That's all. Like I need, I need to know what to do just to still my mind. Like uh, I'll have these couple of things. Like all right, he, you know, he wants a shield grab. He wants to do this. Like this is what I'm supposed to do on this stage. But oftentimes, like my body, right? Like it knows what to do in much more detail, and it, that situation might not even come back. But I have a problem where I overthink things. I let things get to me that are outside of the tournament. This is best of three. There's no warm up, but. When, I'm, when I have these couple core things that I can always like think about and like be comfortable with thinking them so I can just let the rest of me just focus completely on the match, that helps me keep a lot more composure. And then it's honestly just like pure experience. I knew every, I told myself after every stock, like I'm playing good, but I haven't won yet. I'm playing good, like maybe someone watching the 3 0 was like, oh, it looks easy, right? But to me it was like, right now he can turn this right now and it's been so many tournaments where i got in second or third right where like it looks like i can finally do it but i just don't so to me it was honestly just like really basic stuff not letting things get to me keeping composure but like the struggle to get there where it was this like where i remain this focused was a long one you join a legacy of evo champions that only included three other players Four, four or three years ago, 2014, 2015, you were called the God Slayer. Um, 
you know, was back, back then I think it was much more prominent when PPMD and others yeah. were actually playing at a very high level. You looked like you were the sixth person then. Yeah. Plup has joined you, I think, in, in kind of that category of people who on any yeah. given day can beat those players. But you still didn't have an EVO championship. And you do now. Yeah. <laughs> you, join, you join those folks. What does it mean to be among those players as, as in this position? Um, you know, like EVO is very special in many ways. And for me, it was always the tournament I performed the worst that Except for the first one, ironically, where I, like, I was a top 20 player, people considered, but then I got ninth and barely lost to Shroom, if I remember correctly. But since then, I've had, like, I think, two or three ninth place placements where I could have gone further. And I've had the one against Plup, where uh, <laughs> he was supposed to play Sheik against me, and I had a, you know, I beat his Sheik last time, but he, I think he spilled a drink on his controller, ended up going Samus, my worst <laughs> matchup, and I lost through that. Like, it was just a lot of things going wrong, and my mentality was never good about it. So I think that's the biggest victory. Like, legacy is important and all, but I think, for me, it was just overcoming the personal hurdle of EVO being this grand thing, this grand stage, in still being able to play melee at the very highest level despite everything else. Mr. Wizard has kind of hinted, almost a little bit threatened, that uh, <laughs> there's a chance two Smash games will not be included in EVO next year. With Smash Ultimate coming out, it's pretty clear that <laughs> yeah. where the money is going to go from the Nintendo side of it, what they'll support. If this is the last melee tournament at EVO, does that make this any more sweeter? I think that, <laughs> no. I want, I want to do it again. And honestly, I, I don't think this will be the last we'll see. But, you know, if it is, then that, that's it. We'll, we'll thrive in other ways. So Hungerbox is the best player in the world by the ranking, at least. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to go off of. Um, you're up there. You're, you're in the top five. And you've had a good year. What do you have to do to actually finally gain that number one spot once and for all? Um, I think I need to realize what worked. And despite winning, I need to realize what didn't work. And my game ones, I would say, this tournament were particularly bad, which means that I'm probably overthinking things and not letting, like, going with too complicated a game plan. Honestly, like, I, it's really funny where I always consider myself a really strong, like, analyst where I could analyze the match and pick out what to do for the next time. But I always had this procrastination where I, like, wouldn't do it until it's too late or I didn't get a good enough, like, read on my opponents. Um, so I really helped with that. And I had someone else, Drug Fox, help me with uh, the Hunger Box matchup and the Mute game, although that one didn't come up. And... I think that really helped me. I'll definitely look towards continuing that. Um, I, I was always really consistent this year, like I'm probably the, the most consistent if you, in some ways. But I think I needed this win and I need to keep winning tournaments, not just getting third or whatever to really like get number one for this year. And I don't know, this is a good start. When are you going back home? When's, when's, when are you going back to Sweden? So I'm going first to SmashCon next year, and that's another super major. And then I'll be home for two days, and then I'm going to AIR, which is Europe's biggest right. tournament. And yeah, so I'm going back in a week, but until then I'm still here in America. You have SmashCon, it's another big event that you're gonna have to compete at. But then you're gonna get to go home and kind of unwind for a little bit before AIR. What do you take back from this whole entire experience, what do you take back to tell family and friends and, and you know, share? Good sleep helps a lot. <laughs> it really helps. Um, I don't really know. Like, I think just doing what you love is reward enough. And even if I didn't win, I would still be happy with this, with this overall trip, I'm pretty sure. And this makes it sweeter, but I think I just need to realize and you know I realize that I need to appreciate what I'm doing even if the result isn't always you know the best right like we're in a very results driven society but the work does pay off that's basically what I showed myself at least that I always knew that I was getting better I was getting closer but could I reach it could it would it slip away with again but I don't know it finally paid off